This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we are going to review together Womanity by Thierry Mugler. Let's just show it in the beautiful light. I'm just checking on my control monitor to see. There you have the little face. This is an 80 mil. Of course, it's a fingerprint magnet. No pun intended for the movements, but <laughs> it is a pillar. It is a pillar of, of the perfume community. Um, Womanity by Thierry Mugler. Before we get to the review, may I remind you that uh, if you like to return to my channel and watch my videos regularly, consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. You can also push the join button right next to the subscription button and become a member today and get extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob All Spelled Together on Patreon, and become a patron. I would like to thank my members and my patrons for having already pledged. Without you guys, nothing would be possible in the Fashion Bunker. Also, on the side here, I have my control screen. Uh, this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual studio audience, so I have my virtual studio audience chatting with me because my co-reviewers, my virtual co-reviewers, co-reviewers will be reviewing Humanity together with me. So, let me tell you first and foremost that I do have the current, relatively current formulation of it. In fact, as you can see on my box of this 80 mil refillable bottle, we have the relatively new Mugler font, not the old font, which was more curved and round and more organic. This is the Mugler font since Mugla has been taken over by L'Oréal. There has been information and news about this one being discontinued. In fact, in many places, it's not available anymore at all. So on their website, depending on which country you're buying it in, it is still available. Uh, in some countries, it's not available anymore. So I would say get your hands on it because it, it might get discontinued. It's like literally at the bottom of their website. It's not something that they push, you know, every holiday season. The aliens and the angels get their special Christmas box sets. This one doesn't anymore. It's just not that popular. Unfortunately, not that popular anymore. Uh, but um, so since I did purchase this one relatively, I mean, a couple of months ago, half a year ago, uh, the liquid is still pink. However, if you do have a more vintage bot, it's not vintage. Oh, actually it is because this one came out in 2010, I believe. So the actual, yes, 2010. So this one is already 20. What am I talking about? No, it's not vintage. I'm really bad in math. Uh, it's 11 years old because it's 2021. So 10, 20. Yeah. So it's not vintage yet. It needs to be 20 years old to be vintage, but 11 years old. Um... It has been reformulated, but since it's such a synthetic, since L'Oréal took over, but since it's such a synthetic creation to begin with, to me, it still smells the same. Now, some of you who have an older batch, it does turn color, especially if you leave it in the sun or in artificial lighting, like uh, spotlights or just the lights in your bedroom or where have you, wherever you're leaving it, it might, it can change color. It does, older bottles are not pink anymore, they turn yellow. And a lot of people write me preoccupied, Jacob, does this mean it's bad? No, it's not. It's fine if it turned yellow, as long as the smell is still good, it's okay. It turning yellow is totally normal and natural, so the older this one gets, the more yellow it turns. It is pink, however, when it's new. And here we get to the first cliché. The first cliché of it, let me read the text that Thierry Mugler issued about this perfume. 18 years after Angel and five years after Extraordinary Alien, Thierry Mugler is saluting femininity. The new edition will thrill all fans of his creations. This is a text that came out in 2010. It is named Womanity and it arrives in stores in mid-June 2010. Thierry Mugler with Womanity plans to launch, for the third time, a bestseller perfume and which will attract the public for years. Unfortunately, we know now that that's not the case. Womanity is a word created to connect femininity, humanity, and city. So, womanity, woman, 
Manatee, humanity, tea from city, womanity. An overture uh, to this edition began in March 2010 when Mugler launched Womanity.com, a website with an idea that every woman cooperates in its creation and finishing touch, with an aim to create contents for the website. One story is finished by several women, each of them writing on her page. Contest, as, contest asks women to give creative ideas for a particular project or cause. The winner will work with Mugla to finish the website. Well, that went sour. That went south because nobody remembers this anymore. It's like not in the memory of anybody. So this perfume and all this whole conceptuality of doing internet and online and digital, it aged really bad, that entire concept, I have to say. Fragrance Womanity was created as a part of this phenomenon in a pink bottle. Another cliche. Pink is not necessarily the color of women or men. It, it, no color. It, I mean, it, it's, again, marketing and brands trying to brainwash you to believe that a certain color belongs to a certain gender, just like they've tried to make you believe that certain perfumes belong to a certain gender. So pink for women, come on, you guys. During the the realm of uh, Louis XIV or 13th or whatever. Pink was actually, baby pink was actually the color for boys, not for girls. So it just changes. The whole perception of colors and their gender changes from moral to moral, from generation to generation, from epoch to poke, from culture to culture. So it's all just... Connections between women are presented as chains and ring on top of the bottle... There's the ring. One ring to unite them all. In fact, this is the period when Lord of the Rings was also happening on uh, in cinema. Um, connections between women are presented as chains and ring on top of the bottle, which is decorated with metal frieze uh, with symbolic design. Design uh, of the top part of the bottle and beautiful frieze figures can be interpreted Uh, there you go, can be interpreted as gothic, where am I, can be interpreted as gothic or art deco style. Mugler's idea was, however, that the frieze encapsulated and depicted women of all generations. Composition of Humanity was created by Maine as a powerful contrast of elements by using the new molecular process of extraction. Maine manages to extract natural aromas of fig for sweet accords. Savory notes originate from caviar and the structure is ensured by fig wood aromas. Pierre Ola, olfactive director of Clarence Fragrances Group, says that it is a true challenge to work on Mugler's idea of combining savory and sweet notes. Oh, no, I'm focused. Sorry, you guys. I've been reading. I can't focus on two things at the same time. So, um, that's the stopper, which is ridiculous because the top is open. You can push in it and then it's going to spray all over inside the stop. So, this is not something to carry around with you in your purse. Um, so, the noses behind this one are Alexis Dadier, a dude. Because Alexis in English is kind of, you know, Alexis uh, Carrington from Dynasty. You would think it's a woman. No, it's a dude. Maine and Ralph uh, Schwieger. So, isn't it funny that actually dudes uh, conceived a fragrance for women? You see, that the whole thing is sick. It shouldn't be. It just. I, okay. So, first, let me tell you. I l forget about this description, which is dreadful. Uh, I love the bottle for other reasons. Not for the stupidity of the trash drama dr the dramatic epic fail of this whole marketing shit storm that's what made the perfume fail long term in my personal opinion the bottle is amazing it's one of the most beautiful bottle designs ever the longer they are the better no pun intended uh because uh it's just my way more elegant because the shorter ones uh still this part this metal part stays the same in size 
So the more elongated this pillar becomes and the more beautiful it is, I feel in proportions. Um, the the name, Womanity, it should not have been called Womanity. I mean, whatever. It is called Womanity. I can actually live with the name Womanity. The description of why it's called Womanity is something... I'm sorry, I hit the microphone. The, why it's called Womanity is the reason why... No. Woman's Humanity City. Girl, are you kidding me? No. Then... Um, also, I have to say, if you're going to have a perfume, like just online marketing, you're going to have chicks send you in their texts to describe the perfume or the concept for it. If you're going to have women do all that, but you're going to have men actually developing the perfume, then your whole concept just falls. Your whole concept just fails. You should have a woman then design the perfume. I mean, you know what I mean? If you really want to You're not fair if you're if you're paying the guys to do it, so they're earning all the money, but then you're calling it a. But the women do the marketing. What the hell is that? What's that about? Epic fail. Sorry, Teddy. I love you, Teddy McGlad, but this no. Terrible marketing. Terrible idea how to market it. My end. Um. So. Let's just forget about that. I had to read that because it's part of the perfume also. It's it's also one of the reasons why it took me so many years to really, really, really kind of detach, force myself to detach because I'm trying to be less judgmental. So, you know, so I detached myself from the marketing of this fragrance and just experienced the fragrance for what it is without this whole trash terrible marketing which is killing the perfume and it's in fact the least sold perfume from Teddy Mugler. I'm not talking about the exclusives range from Teddy Mugler, from the mass released ones this is the one that's being discontinued in many countries so let's spray it so of course a lot of people like to take this little ring and again ring women attaching themselves to a guy when they get married what the hell is it I like the me being attached to the per like if you were just say you're becoming you like you're marrying your perfume. You're becoming one with your perfume. Then I love the ring concept. But if you're gonna talk about femininity and then the ring and what is this the ultimate dream that a girl dreams to get hitched to a guy because she, that's her ultimate dream to have some man by her? No, no. A woman can be incredibly strong and incredible and creative and have a wonderful life also without a guy by her side. Her ultimate dream isn't to get married. Are you kidding me? But seeing this ring as a marriage between who loves the perfume and the perfume. Now that's more poetic to me. That works better. Anyway, so I'm marrying the perfume by putting the ring on. I love it. You see, forget the concept, forget the whole tragedy of the marketing. Just envision this as the ring, the alien type of ring, because it does look like it came from another planet with all these freezes, as they call them with all these symbolisms and symbols. It almost looks like H.R. Uh, Giger's alien concept art. You know H.R. Giger, the artist who did the who created the alien for the late 70s movie with Sigourney Weaver. This is like something that came out of an alien, from H.R. Giger. This looks like it came out from an HR, from the H.R. Uh, Giger atelier. Uh, so you spray it and it does smell of alien future. It is salty to me. It is savory to me. It is not sweet to me, but it is fresh to me as well. Now, if we get to the notes, it, very simple. Fig, fig tree, fig leaf, fig three times, but they all have different accords because the actual fig smells slightly different to the fig tree, which is more woodsy. The fig is fruity, slightly sweet. The fig tree is woodsy. The fig leaf is green. So we have the green smell, the fruity sweet smell, and the woodsy smell. Those three combined, it's just beautiful. And on top of that, we have the caviar. The caviar is this molecular extraction that they were talking about that Maine was uh, uh, famous for. Um, I, yeah, it, it's like a concept of caviar. Remember, there is on YouTube this video, still presentation from Thierry Mugla's uh, marketing side. This guy is showing this woman. I think she's an actress or something. Like, here, let me let me give you the four elements separate, like the caviar. I'm going to let you smell the fig fruit alone. She smells. She's like, oh, yeah, it's sweet. And now I'm going to let you smell the fig tree on its own. And then she smells. She's like, oh, yeah, very woodsy. 
And then he's like, I'm going to let you smell the fig leaf. She's like, oh, you're a little bit green. And he's like, and now I'm going to let you smell caviar. He gives her the caviar and she goes, yo, very caviar. <laughs> You know, whatever. Super funny. And then he's like, now we're going to combine all the four ingredients and uh, what do you smell now? And she's like, and you, <laughs> it's so funny. And of course she has to say it's great. And she's like, smells it. it. It was a relatively new concept for 2010, I guess. And she smells it and she goes, wow. <laughs> it's different. And he's like, yes, it is. Now, as kind of unimpressed as she was, uh, I am impressed. I have to tell you, for a mass release uh, perfume, this one is majestic. This is niche quality here. Um, ASMR, the chain. It's so relaxing, you guys. This to me, the bottle is niche. It's an art piece. The smell is an art piece. It's synthetic to a point where I have smelled the older bottles with the Thierry Mugler, with the old logo, and I smell, th th to me, there's no difference yet. As of 2021, new IFRA regulations are out. They might be reformulating this one again. Look how beautiful the drawing is behind here. This is the back of the bottle. This is refillable. You can take this off and then you just basically screw this off and then you pull it out and then you could like you could buy the refill the refill the 90 mil or is it 100 mil i think it's 90 mil refills for it um but these pillars with this heavy metal on top they're just so beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful bottle and um i would honestly not buy the refills i would just keep purchasing these because i think they're just too beautiful to collect could you imagine having like four or six or eight pillars and putting something on top and having them like hold a rooftop of some sort and just building an installation with these, like a little thing at home. Come on, this is amazing. Just saying, this bottle is really worth every penny. It's just so beautiful. Uh, and it is, it has a sexuality to it for sure. Now the smell, this one lasts for hours. On my skin, it goes on up to 10, 12 hours. Uh, it's very intense in the first four hours. Um, it has a presence. It's not overpowering. You got to know how to dose it. Don't overspray it all over yourself. One, two, three, four, five spritzes for me, and it's already sometimes too much. Only these two if I have long sleeves so I can cover it up. If not, I don't I do not do the arm. I would just do one, two, three. Uh, and uh, I smell it for many, many hours. Um, it is not something I like to smell if I am eating cake or something sweet because this one is quite salty. So it kind of gives me that weird, I mean, unless I'm not in the mood, you know, sometimes you are in the mood to mix savory and salty. I do have those olfactory swings. Sometimes I do like to mix my things. I do actually quite often, but otherwise, this is a perfume I like to wear after I have eaten. It's a perfume I love to spray on when I'm satiated, when I'm completely full and um, I feel really good. I top off my, that satiateness, I top it off with this perfume. I spray it on and it just, it, it's like a topper offer. It's a top offer, off topping, top off, to top off the delicious meal. Like the best to me, and I know it sounds weird, but since they're talking about caviar, to me, caviar doesn't smell like fish. It smells like, it tastes super salty. I love caviar, by the way. But so let's say to me, this one smells the best after you've eaten. Now you're going to laugh, but after you've eaten a plate of pasta and just not just any pasta, spaghetti, tomato spaghetti with a lot of olives, they are salty. So you see where I'm getting it. It's acidy and salty at the same time. Pasta, like spaghetti with tomato and olives and a bit of basil, oregano too. That's it. Salt and pepper. That's it. You eat that. After that, you spray this on. That's when you, oh, I forgot one vital passage. In Italy, it is common after you've done eating the pasta, you take bread and you take from the pan where the sauce was made, the sugo was made, and you pick the, the sauce up with the bread and you eat that. You need that bread as well. You need that bread 
to balance out the acidity with the kind of basic flavor, uh, um, with the neutral flavor, because it neutralizes, well, my bread is acidic too, but it doesn't taste as acidic as tomato sauce. So you do the, the spaghetti with the tomato sauce, the olives, uh, the salt, the pepper, the oregano, the basil, and then with the bread, you swipe the leftover of the sauce, you eat the bread, then you spray this on. Like half an hour after you've eaten, that's when the magic happens. Because this one is a beautiful fragrance for when you are satiated. This is not a fragrance to spray on when you're hungry. And I say this a lot because some perfumes, some perfumes really work well when you're hungry. Because usually what happens to me, if I am hungry and I spray on a perfume, my stomach just starts growling and I get a cramp in my stomach and I get even more hungry. Perfume usually for me doesn't work when I'm hungry. Uh, there are a couple perfumes that work very well when I'm hungry, but they're very rare. Uh, this one is the complete opposite. This one, don't go near this one if you're feeling hungry because it's going to kill you. Uh, and, and it's just going to make you even more hungry because it's so savory. It's going to make you really, your mouth water. Uh, but if you are satiated and then you top off that satiateness with this, then you're in heaven. Then you're in heaven because this one just like puts a wonderful cap on top of that great feeling of being satiated. It's that beautiful. The fig for me, um, it's very earthy. On me, this one develops in a very earthy way. Um, I smell soil that has been drenched with fig. Another cliche with this one is that, you know, you call it womanity. You're telling me women developed the whole advertisement campaign around it. And then like the, sim the ingredient you use for it is fig and caviar. Like the fig symbolism of femininity, of the female gender, of the female organ. You know, again, it's so heavy. The burden, the burden that this perfume carries on its shoulders. It's just too much. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. You got, you know, this wonderful, wonderful design. I love this face, by the way, this mask with this kind of beard. It's almost like something that comes from Egypt. You know, like an Egyptian face as well. This is beautiful. Nothing against it. But I'm like, okay, so that's supposed to be feminine. But to me, it's alien. More alien than feminine, really. This one should have been called alien. Alien should have been called something else. And this should have been alien. It's so wonderful. It's like a key, like a energetic key that you have to put into the console of some flight modal module or something. You put it in and then you click it and then it locks in and then like the machine starts working. The, that this is kind of it works like a key for from the future to me more than woman humanity city girl fig and caviar bait the caviar another trashy symbolism for you know what so i'm like don't overdo it be more elegant and more subtle about it so uh because the bottle in itself is beautiful the perfume in itself is beautiful even the color of the juice is beautiful but then they had to go and define each one of them giving them these characteristics for their marketing purposes that just killed it oh because it's a womanity so it has to be pink because women pink really so woman yeah it's woman so fig you know female gender and caviar you know female gender really we gotta call it womanity because women really Women are going to do the marketing, but men are going to design the perfume. Like so much went wrong. So much went wrong that this one had no chance, you guys. But it merits. Dare I say this should be, this is kind of the first perfume in history that I would relaunch completely. I would relaunch it just as is, but with a completely updated marketing. Um, I would not give it all those weird attributes that are such cliches nowadays. They're so obsolete. They're so dated. We have moved on from there. And I would relaunch it as something genderless, free, you know, like. It's like something from another time. I would launch it as something that came from the future to help us with our present times. Like somebody sent us this to help us deal with our present times. Uh, and. These facets of the fig are so fascinating. It does evolve. It does have, on me, as I said before, it, doesn't, it never really goes sweet. So I do, however, get the more ripe fig aroma in there without the sugar. 
And then it does switch to the earthy, woodsy aspect of fig. It switches. And then it does go into the green, leafy side of fig as well. Always, always framed by this savory, salty tone, which to me doesn't smell fishy at all. And here we get to the fish. Another cliche, really, you call it womanity and then fit. No, girl, come on. Just too much. However, rest assured, it does not have a fishy tone at all. It's just that, you know, how umpalumpas are. One says it, everybody else follows. So I don't know who came up with that idea and everybody else said, yeah, it smells like fish. It does not smell like fish, you guys. It does not. It has a salty tone to that beautiful fig. It does have that classic synthetic opulent Thierry Mugler note, which is always a secret. It's always a mystery. There's something in there that smells of shoulder pads, of pointy, long, big shoulder pads, of power, of, of over-the-top, almost like superhero aesthetic type of power. Only Almost like Leni Riefenstahl, you know, Leni Riefenstahl, the photographer from the 30s. It's like she took photos from the bottom up. Uh, always these like, these sportive, athletic bodies that always look like you know, that's why we're comic figures of superheroes nowadays take inspiration from Lady Riefenstahl. This is that type of aesthetic. It's like a perfume bottle that needs to be photographed from the bottom up because it has that humongous, you know, like, vroom. it's huge and uh, it's big and it soars. And it has that characteristic, that Thierry Mugler superhero comic book characteristic, that synthetic tone that all of his perfumes have, that only his perfumes have. This one has it too. And it's magical because here it's not so intoxicatingly overpowering like it is an alien and an angel. And a lot of you love angel and alien. Uh, but this one is more sophisticated because it, it, it's an evolution. It's like a more mature version of angel and alien. It's like, it's like Thierry Mugler and whatever his team who works for him learned so much throughout the years and they've evolved and matured. And now they deliver something way more elegant. This one is way more elegant than Alien and Angel. Alien and Angel are just powerhouses, you know. This one, this one has thought. Forget the concept again, as I said, it's trash. But this one has the thought that goes into it in terms of the smell, the ripeness of the smell. And it does become warmer uh, as it dries down. It almost becomes, as it dries down on my skin, it almost becomes like a holiday fragrance, like something to wear... Christmas, Easter, it, it gets that smell of that something extra that is to be worn only on special occasions. Uh, and it develops wonderfully in summer and also in winter. This is also something fascinating to say about this one. In summer, it does accentuate its, that caviar note, that more like seaside, salty, fresh breeze note. And in summer on my skin, the fig leaf with the green aspects develops more. In winter, uh, in the cold days, it's more the fig tree. So the more woodsy aspect of this fragrance that blossoms. A tree can't really blossom, but it blooms on my skin. I smell out that warmth of the tree, of the fig tree on my skin, more in winter. And in summer, I sense out more of the fig leaf. So it's a very, very chameleontic perfume. Genius, if you think about it, because they all they did was utilize three aspects of the fig. The fig fruit, the fig tree, and the fig leaf. And, uh, but, and yet, even though it's the same plant, they have such specific and different characteristics, and each one of them goes to a different part, uh, you know, and and then that savory touch, because a fig, you never really associate a fig with salty, except for the fact that a fig usually grows on the seaside. So the fig trees are usually surrounded by a breeze of salty air. And that's the magic and the poetry of this perfume. It does feel like a garden of figs right next to the seaside. And you have that sea breeze, that salty breeze covering that beautiful, still garden of fig trees as the sun is so slowly setting and you have a couple of lazy bumblebees and bees still flying around. You hear a cricket in the long distance, very still, and the air is just humming ever so slightly and delicately. There's almost a hint of honey in the air, but it's always covered up by this wonderful, delicate, lazy breeze coming from the sea. And you're sitting on your porch or patio, 
and you're just listening to those, those little humming or buzzing of the bees or of the bumblebees, and you get a waft of a delicate breeze, of a, but it's warm. It's not a cold breeze. It's always the warm ocean or sea air that just caresses your skin, and it's salty, but it's mixed in with the figs. And there's silence in the air. There's just a lazy haze of sound. That's humanity. You see, it's the opposite of all that crazy. It's a woman in a city. It's humanity. It's pink, but it's a girl. And it's the freezes. And it's power to the women and all that. I'm like, I'm all for power to the girls. I'm not telling you. Also, this ring to get married. Like, are you kidding me? A girl don't need a man to be powerful. No, she doesn't. She is powerful already. And she knows it. Especially in 2021, she knows it. It's about time that the rest of the world realizes that she knows it. This one is more about stillness and laziness and a haze. It's like a haze of beauty, of mesmerizing, enjoying the lazy hours of a summer evening. That is the beauty of it. And this ring is literally, to me, a symbol Put it on to marry the, the fragrance, to marry that laziness, to embrace yourself, to embrace your mood, to embrace feeling your oats for what they are. Yeah, you got a stain on your t-shirt from eating the pasta and that little tomato sauce is there. So, so what? It's okay. It doesn't matter because you smell fabulous. Thank you guys so much for this, for listening to me for this uh, review. But I'm going to go to the chats now to see what you guys think of it. Oh, Catmo999 uh, just subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing, sweetie. You guys can also subscribe, if you haven't yet, to my channel. Um, my bottle is from 2018, says Emilio. I remember making a review for it on YouTube and then deleting the entire channel. Oh, girl. Do you have the videos still left? You can re-upload it. Brandon says, the bottle looks different than the one uh, you usually show, Deco. No, it's the same one. It's the same exact bottle. I only have one bottle. I didn't purchase this one yet again, but I will. I will be stocking up on this one. Um, oh, sorry. I had the French word in my head. UFO, not OVNI. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that a new bottle? Brenda says, no, it's not. I got this one a couple of months ago. But the liquid, you, you see it's up to here already, but it was up to there. So, I mean, I used quite a bit of it, considering that I have like so many perfumes and I use a lot of them. So, um, Debbie says, I love the jingle, the chain against the bottle. Yeah, it's so relaxing. I love it too. Oh my God, thank you for reminding me, Debbie. This actually, that haze and that summer sitting on the porch, that breeze of salty, that's, this is the sound of that. This is the sound you hear when you're... It's delicate, subtle. Um, the color of my bottle has never changed since 2018, but 2018 is still not that far off. People from 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, like th those liquids have changed. Debbie says mine hasn't changed either. Helen says in my 15 mil, you can use the top as a ring. Ah, yes, yes. The 15 mil ones you can. Brenda says, I want a bottle. Light to me says, so the year 2000 can be considered vintage now. That's scary. The year 2001 can be considered vintage now. Yes, that is scary. And yes, that is vintage. Vintage means from vinta, from venti, which means 20. So it's from Latin. So vintage actually comes from the root of the word, which means 20. Everything that is 20 years and older is vintage. So it's easy to remember. So you can, that's how you can always calculate and remember that vintage means 20, something that is 20 years or older. Or, or older. Um... Rules are all made up, says Brandon. So true. MK says, I'm a dude and I love wearing pink and I don't think it looks feminine on me. It doesn't at all. The colors are, colors, no, no genders either. Everything is stunning in this bottle. The bottle, the juice itself, says Helen. It is amazing. It's just so beautiful. I mean, you guys, this is such a masterpiece of a design. Honestly. Um, I love the bottle, even though the face on it makes me uneasy. Haha, <laughs> says Patrick. I love this face. It's so, you know, this face reminds me a little bit of Grace Jones. It's so majestic. It's like Grace Jones, but with a little bit of like kind of a feline, like an eye that's transformed into a cat. A little bit feline eye. It's more like a star than a cat, but it's very Grace Jones. I love it so much. 
the face gives me major character, says Brandon. And I love holding it like a like a lightsaber. It does have a Star Wars. -y. You kind of turn it on and then, you know, the lightsaber just pops out from over here. It's like a lightsaber, isn't it? Let me cover my face. Will it focus on the bottle? No. There you go. It's a lightsaber. Uh, it's very alien-esque, says Brendan. Uh, the movie, yes. I love the bottle. Very futuristic. Uh, futuristic folk, says Emilio. Factive Story says, I agree, Brendan. I was going to say it. Yeah, very alien. MK says, Emilio, have you tried the Rose Poivre of a different company? Very manly and raunchy on some men. Brendan says, colors are objective and subjective to the wearer. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, says Brendan. Exactly like Pete Burns used to say. And he beholded himself. Um, Patrick says, alien would have been a better name for this one than the actual alien perfume, I think. Uh, yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Uh, Patrick says, I haven't smelt this one either, but just from what I'm learning so far, I get, I get that judgment. I do not know exactly what you mean, but the, but anyway, I'm scrolling. Okay, love the ring concept. It's more like she's marrying herself, says Brandon. That's a good one. Yeah, marrying yourself. Fact of Sources looks like a way to get chained to me. <laughs> Magda says, amen. Uh, Debbie says, marketing was awful, but the juice, outstanding. Daniel says, I hate it when people try to neuter me because I have lived solo. True. That's a good point. Emilia says, forget all the marketing. The perfume and bottle are amazing. Factive story says, voila. Aisha says, yes, the marketing is very condescending. Would love to smell this. Ergastiri Petra says, thank you, David, for saying that this is so sexist concept. Uh, Melly says, I live solo too, Daniel, and I love it. Yes, girl. <laughs> Melly, what about Coco? Coco was, al was alone too. MK says, maybe Ridley Scott was inspired by this bottle when he started to design the settings for Prometheus. I don't think so. I mean, I think Ridley Scott has such a huge archive of his own images from the 70s and from H.R. Giger already that he... I think, if anything, Thierry Mugler was inspired by Alien to, to do this than the other way around. Lie to Me 101 says, married to myself. Yes, queen. Roar. Um... <laughs> Melly says, I was married. It was not for me. LOL. Debbie says, same here, Melly. <laughs> yeah, you see, you don't need to be married to be happy. Like, why, you know? It was only 28 bucks uh, with the smoother, Brandon says. You got like a, that's cheap. Uh, they're refillable, says Emilio. Yes, they are refillable. MK says, hmm, I should give it a try. I'm afraid of the woody notes, though. The box packaging is terrible. Looks very cheap. I mean, it's very Thierry Mugler of today. Yeah, again, the pink stuff. I mean, but I like the back picture very much. But this bottle to me is just so much. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, I love the design of this bottle. Love it. Uh, Helen says, yes, it's refillable. Debbie says, I need to buy a refill when I can. The refill is just an ugly vial of glass and it doesn't cost much less than this one. So think twice. I, I don't get the whole concept of the refillable bottles. You got to throw away the refillable bottle too. And the refillable bottle is glass and metal, just like this one. So why is it preserving the environment? I don't get it. Amelie says, me too. I got to try this one. Oh, Debbie says, it's a keeper. This one is a keeper, you guys. It's wonderful. Salty fig. Are you kidding me? Nothing like it out there. Nothing like it. I love how humanity is refillable. All Thierry Mugler perfumes are, most, mostly all of them. I love the minimal packaging, says Brendan. Wrapping is not easy to find only during Christmas, says uh, Emilio. Yeah, but they don't do humanity Christmas stuff. Uh, Aisha says, uh, Mugler was one of the first with the recycling. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Helen says, oh, yes, dear. Um, right, refilling. Oh, Aisha means refilling. Mugler was one of the first with the refilling and recycling. Yeah. Yes, and Melly says, I remember Angel also being refillable. Correct. <laughs> Brandon says, now I'm hungry for fish. <laughs> oh, I love eating fish, you guys. Uh, we need um, to uh, all meet for drinks and caviar, LOL. Oh, that would be lovely, darling. Uh, Brandon says, I'm about to go grocery shopping for matzo ball chicken soup. Oh, love the matzo balls. I'm hungry now, says Olfactive Stories. I'm hungry too, you guys. Oh, Brandon, love matzo ball soup. Mm, delicious. 
Mm. Mouthwatering. The glass still have their refill stations, says Amelia. Yeah, they do. I'm having amaretto and chicken nuggets because I'm classy like that, says lied to me. Oh, love me some chicken nuggets. Yes, MK, I still have my bottle of angels, says Aisha. Uh, I will always remember this perfume. The first time I sprayed a little bit of this juice on a paper, put it in my agenda. Wow. Every time I opened it, it smelled marvelously. Marvelously nice. Something I had never, ever smelled before. That's from Helen French. I got a... Oh, wait. This is... Okay. Everybody's starving now all of a sudden because I was talking about savory stuff. Is humanity a gourmand? Asks Brendan. No, it's not a gourmand. Um, it's it's a woodsy, salty, breezy, fig leafy fragrance. Uh, Brendan says, I'm a fig lover. Oh, then you best try this, but you got to be a fig lover that is salty, not sweet. Debbie says... Um, I don't find it synthetic. Oh, I do. I do. I must give it a try. Uh, who's waiting just a second? Let me go up again. MK. So, ah, yes, I must give it a try. Doesn't it smell too synthetic? Well, I'm being judgmental. Some synthetic perfumes can also smell wonderful. Some synthetic perfumes can smell wonderful. Um, and Amelia says, Womanity is the best combo of raw and synthetic. Um... Paco Rabanne made their copy of this one. Try Olympia and you'll see what I'm talking about, says Emilio. Brandon says, Calyx is sweet and sour in the best way. Debbie says, brilliant idea, a relaunch. Yes, they should relaunch Humanity. Um, Debbie says, it smells amazing on clothing too. Uh, Daniel says, wonderful review. Keep to try, uh, keen to try this one. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Brandon says, wow, very bizarre. Uh, think of it as salty caramel, says Emilio. Uh, uh, Debbie says, um, or salt of the ocean. Yeah, that's interesting too. Emilio says salty popcorn, salty caramel popcorn. Um, Emilio says, I always wear Womanity in summer. I love it in summer too. I've never tried this, says Audrey. You should definitely give it a, give it a try. Uh, I haven't either, Audrey, says Brendan. Um, Womanity is a place, says Debbie. That is true. It is a place. It's a mood and a place. It's a mood within a place. It's a, it's a place with a lot of space. Brendan says, I want to wear this while I watch Picnic at Hanging Rock. Oh, that's a good one. I love Picnic at Hanging Rock. Oh, that movie's so dreamy and breezy. This one could go well with that one. But Picnic at Hanging Rock would also need a vanilla perfume as well. Sholimar goes well with Picnic at Hanging Rock. Susan Bailey says, bloody love you, Jacob. Love you too, Susan. Thank you. Uh, Amelia says, I also had the leather infused version. Wasn't a big fan of that one. I haven't tried that one, but I'm keen on trying it out just because you get it in the leather pouch. I want that pouch. <laughs> um, but yeah, it smells like it sounds. I love that, Brandon, uh, Brandon says. Uh, like wind chimes, says Debbie. Amazing sweater. Wow, is it Vivian Paul? Uh, no, it's not Vivian. It's from um, C Neon, a uh, lovely brand of ladies uh, that uh, were creating these amazing patterns and prints and really, really beautiful concepts. I don't think the brand exists anymore, unfortunately. Brandon says, Grace Jones. I totally see her. Grace Jones. MK says, so basically it should smell the same as my friend's garden in the south of France in August. Her garden is facing the sea and is covered with fig trees, which are filled with fruits in August. Yeah, if that would be more Ballade Sauvage by Christian Dior. And Debbie, this is what I mean when I say this one is a bit synthetic, because when compared to Ballade Sauvage, also a fig-based perfume, Ballade Sauvage smells natural. This one smells like something alien is in there as well something that we're not used to and that's why i say synthetic but in a good way in a good in a very good way um i see the grace jones there says aisha yeah yes it's definitely a nubil nubile have you seen grace jones in boomerang yep grace yep grace as amelia richmond says 
Kazimi by a uh, house of ma matriarch is a masculine rose. Miu says, not that hocus pocus lady child. <laughs> um, does womanity smell like a woman? Mr. Philip Fabulous says, no, womanity. Uh, does womanly smell like a woman? What do you mean woman? Womanity? No. Womanity smells of womanity. It's its own creation. Daniel says, I do want to buy it soon. Not immediately, because I had to replace my Mitsuko, which was urgently needed. Paul Parker says, companies use these issues like environmentalism to virtue signal. They don't really care. I agree with you. In most cases, they don't. Um, oh, hey, PC, welcome to the chat. Hello, just off work briefly. Hello, Deco. Hello, PC, welcome, welcome. Uh, Daniel says, Picnic at Hanging Rock is a fine film, but nothing can compare to the suspense of the novel. Highly recommended. I live less than an hour or so from Hanging Rock, and I have never been there. <gasps> Daniel, it is my dream to go to Hanging Rock, and you've never been there. But it's usually the case when you live in a place where where you live in a place and you always think you can always put it off. I'll go there and some other time, some other time and you end up never going. But then like you have tourists from all across the world flying in just to go there. It's kind of funny, but it's kind of the same for all of us. No matter where we live, we end up not really seeing all the most special places of where we live in because we kind of think we're there anyway. For some reason, the face on the bottle reminds me of a Balkan folklore attire, says Emilio. Well, this bearded thing here is very pharaoh. It's very ancient Egypt to me. Leslie says, yes, I have been looking at you fabulous sweater for a while. Love you and your child. Thank you so much, Leslie. Love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Do you think it should have been named humanity instead or it was meant to be? Asks Brenda. Now, humanity is also such a heavy like, humanity. It's very cringe. No. Alien would have been the right name for this one. This this is alien to me. This is what alien should smell of. Uh, I meant humanity. Sorry, Mr. Philip Fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, I got it. Um, yeah. Paul says, I love the the, uh, the quilted parts uh, um, and the orange and black drawstrings and the colors. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, they are kind of drawstrings, but they're like, they go all around. It's also very alien. I wanted to dress like a spaceman a little bit because I knew I was reviewing this one. So in kind of in a way, this is also an homage to it, to this kind of future. And then the, these strings, they also go all the way over the shoulder to the back. You know, so I plan everything. <laughs> nothing, nothing happens without a reason. Um, but yeah. So you guys, uh, thank you so much. Paul Parker says, oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for co-reviewing with me, Womanity. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, look at all the bubbles of air going through. If you have enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. Uh, and um, I'm looking at all the bubbles. They're so gorgeous. And I would like to thank all of my wonderful supporters, members, and patrons that are scrolling here to the side check check yourselves out you guys you make the fashion bunker happen thanks to you all of this is possible and you can you i'm looking at you you can become a member too today you can join the fashion bunker by pushing the join button next to the subscription button on my youtube channel or joining me on patreon super deco ball spelled together on patreon you get extra perks by doing so you get access to videos before others. You get access to live streams that only members get access to. You get access to entire live stream reruns, special videos that never come to YouTube. So, and emojis and badges of honor. Uh, so that that's for that. But you can also just subscribe as well. You can start from there if you wish to check it out first and then see uh, what happens, how it develops from, from there. You could, you could take it from there. You can also follow me on Instagram, Super Deco Ball Spelled Together, on Twitter and Facebook as well. I do have two Instagram profiles that I curate on the topic of Chanel. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together, where I talk about the Chanel brand of today and my private collection. But also the other Instagram profile is called Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated all to Coco Chanel herself, to her life to all the achievements she made while she was alive, leading up to the year 1971, which is when she passed away. 
Um, what else is there to say about Womanity except this is a wonderful example of a fragrance uh, that is majestic. The bottle is majestic. The liquid is majestic. The design is majestic, but the marketing is tragic. And this is a wonderful example of how marketing can kill a fragrance long term. Um, and it's also a wonderful example of maybe having for the first time ever in history a perfume relaunch itself. Same bottle, just a new marketing strategy. It's something to think about. It's definitely something to consider. Now, since L'Oréal took over Thierry Mugler fragrances, I don't think they're very keen on revamping it. I think they just need numbers. So if they don't see the numbers coming in of sales, they're just going to slowly strangulate this one until it's gone for good. So the only way to, to prevent that is to purchase this uh, juice. And I recommend purchasing it before the reformulations hit because I know that L'Oréal thinks years ahead of time, they react before the rules by the IFRA hit. So this one was probably already adjusted for the new regulations way ahead of time. But nevertheless, I'm the type of person who would then rather purchase older batches than new ones. And even more so, if this one is to be discontinued, I will definitely be purchasing uh, a backup bottle, for sure. Uh, because to me it merits, but to each their own. Do not blind purchase it though. Smell it first before you buy it because it is a very special perfume. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.